Hello everyone! Welcome to week number 8 of the Stained Glass Flower Puzzle Mystery Quilt. Finally, today we will be finishing up our art quilt and I am super excited. So I have my puzzle pieces here. I have our grid. You can see I've already gone through and done my week number 8 puzzle pieces just to speed up today's video so we'll get to that in just a second. I have a couple fabrics here I want to show you. I have my yarn because today I'm going to be doing some couching. I have some double folded biased uh, quilt binding that I picked up at Joann's today. This is going to be totally optional and I'll tell you the reason why I got that in just a minute. And of course I have my uh, wet glue, the glue wall from Elmer's. And we're going to have a lot of fun today. I have the door open and so you might hear the sounds of spring in the background. Uh, finally, I think I can go today without turning on my heater, so <laughs> I am happy all the way around today. So I thought I would go ahead and do my week number eight puzzle pieces before we get started today, because today we're going to be focusing on finishing this quilt. We're going to be adding a border. Uh, I'm going to be doing some couching, and that's going to be optional based on how you want to finish your quilt. And then, uh, yes, we'll be done with this quilt. And I cannot wait to see your pictures. So first, let's go over the grid for this week. We are on the final row, row number eight. You can see we have five applique blocks. And then uh, the F block is totally solid. And so we won't be doing applique in that last block. So I've already gone through, just so you can see real quick, all of my pieces. I have done the applique and the satin stitch for each one, and they are ready to go onto the fabric base. Finally, finishing up uh, the last row of this quilt, and there's my F block. It's completely solid. So before we begin, let's go ahead and go over these puzzle pieces. By now, I am uh, uh, thinking that you're a pro at this. But let's go ahead and go over the puzzle pieces just in case. We have A, H. Uh, again, I did make my reference points and we have a little bit of a stem coming down. I did my reference points because it doesn't actually give me a reference at the bottom. And so those help me line this up so that it'll have the exact placement. Again, we're all green now with our applique fabrics. Position B8 has two pieces of uh, leaf coming down and a portion of stem in the upper left hand corner. C8 is two pieces of a leaf. And then our last two pieces for this quilt is D8 and that's a large portion of a leaf. And E8 is a smaller portion of a leaf in the top left hand corner. So there are our pieces. Let's see, B8, I did also make the reference points for this lower portion of the leaf. So this is it. This is our final uh, puzzle pieces for this quilt. Just like all of the other pieces, there will be the download for week number eight puzzle pieces. And because this is the final week, I do have one PDF and the link will be right under this one where I have combined all eight weeks into one PDF. I think it's 27 pages long. And so if you've been waiting till the very end to just download one pattern, uh, that is there in the Etsy shop now. And so you can go and grab all of the puzzle pieces all at one time. And I'm also uh, including a link to the playlist in case you haven't saved that. And that has all of the videos for this series in one place. So hopefully that will make it easier. Okay, so let's talk about this double folded bind binding before we begin. My quilt, uh, let's see, border. I originally thought that I would do a black border all the way around my quilt. And in the introduction instructions, it calls for a, a small border and it gives you those measurements on that sheet. Originally I thought I would go with black just to really frame the stained glass. However, 
when I was at Joann's this morning, I saw this fabric. <laughs> and it kind of really just goes with all of the different background squares in my quilt. And I thought it would really brighten up the border around uh, my stained glass. And it would give the appearance that sun is really coming through from the back. So I've changed my mind and I've gone to this as my border fabric and a black as my binding. So I'm thinking because I've gone from black to this as a border that I might want to use a bias strip all the way around the border of my quilt just to sort of separate uh, the stained glass portion, the puzzle piece portion from the border. So I'm not quite sure about this. We'll see when we get to this part, but that's the reason I picked this up. And you may or may not decide to do something like this. So, and really I feel like how we finish our quilts today, uh, you might be inspired by how I finish mine. You might decide to do something totally different. We've talked all the way through about different ways on finishing uh, the raw edge border around each one of your background squares. I've heard from some of you who are going to do a satin stitch around all of them. Some of you are going to do just a simple zigzag stitch, which would be lovely as well. I'm going to be using yarn. I've seen uh, some of you have purchased bias tape makers and you're going to make your own bias tape. So how I finish my quilt today is just really a suggestion and uh, maybe something to inspire you. You might choose to do something totally different. However, I think the process will be the same and so you can follow along and see my quilt when we're all done. So I think that covers everything. What I'm going to go ahead and do to save time in today's video is glue my background squares the final row on our fabric base and then we'll come back and I believe that I will start gluing down my yarn so that's where we are right now and I'm gonna heat up my iron and break out my glue and put on my final puzzle pieces okay I am back now from gluing my pieces onto the bottom edge of my quilt and I'm going to show you a picture right here of what the background looks with all eight weeks glued to the fabric base. And this is how we look to this point. Isn't that so pretty? So this is how it looks without any of the uh, bias tape or yarn that's going to separate our blocks. And that is totally optional. So this is a, a good representation of what your quilt would look like if you want to do a zigzag stitch to secure all of your 5 inch blocks. I personally would like to come in with some yarn and couch this, sewing it down right over top all of my raw edges and finishing off my blocks that way. So that's going to give our quilt a little bit of a different look and I thought I'd bring you along for this process so you could see how it's done. And I'm really close onto the quilt because I want you to be able to see a closer uh, view of what I'm doing. So all of the quilt doesn't actually fit right into the frame. So bear with me as we're working through that. So let me show you. I'm going to be using the Lion Brand yarn hometown usa it's just black thicker yarn it is a five ounce net weight and uh, let's see it's a number six super bulky so at this point i think before i add my borders i'm going to go ahead and glue down my yarn both horizontally and vertically so this I think is going to take a little bit of time. You of course could just hold it in place and sew along. I've proven through some trial runs in an earlier video of this series that I cannot do that and keep mine straight. However, if you can, you can skip the whole gluing process and just go straight to sewing. I'm going to bring in the glue and glue down all of my yarn and let it dry before I add my borders. Now I do think that you could do this one of two ways. You could do this process now 
and the raw edges of your bias tape or your yarn will be sewn in when we add the borders to all of the sides. And so that's going to give you a bit of a finished look once we add the borders right there that'll sew in and finish off that edge perfectly. Or you could go ahead and add your borders and then come in with your yarn. It's really up to you. It's your quilt and I don't like to have any rules. And so you could do this now or you could add your borders and then put your yarn or bias tape or do your zigzag. It's all up to you and what you think will be easiest. I'm going to go ahead and do this part now and so I'm just going to show you. It's just as simple as running a bead of glue right along the seam line of your five inch blocks and placing the yarn and letting it dry. <laughs> it's not complicated whatsoever. I am going to remove this label though to help ease the process of taking this yarn off. Can you hear my neighbor's dog? <laughs> okay, so let's see. I'm going to try to make it so that you can see everything I'm doing. So I'll be shifting the quilt back and forth. I'll start here in the middle since you can see that part, but I'm going to do this for every horizontal line in between my five inch blocks. I'm going to be very generous with the glue because I don't want any of my yarn coming loose while I'm doing all of this. So just running some glue right along that seam. Again, if you think you can hold your bias tape or your yarn nice and straight, then you can eliminate this whole step. I personally, <laughs> I cannot do it. So now I'm just going to apply my yarn just like this. Smush it down into place right in that glue. Like that and make sure it's all nice and straight. I'll cut off a little bit of the extra so you can see I'm just leaving that right there for a minute. Again, making sure that yarn is in full contact with the glue. Smushing it down just like that. So now I'm perfectly straight and I can just let the glue dry. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all of my horizontal lines first. We'll let that dry and then I'll come back when we go to do the vertical lines that go from the top to the bottom of our quilt. Now I'm back from a short break. I went ahead and applied all of the horizontal yarn right over top of all of my raw edges. I'll show you a picture of what that looks like. And then I waited about 20 minutes and so this is pretty much dry. You can see it's not going anywhere. And so I can work with my quilt with the lines that are going vertically. And you can see I flipped my quilt around so I can work in this direction now. So again, we're just applying a bead of glue right along this raw edge and laying down our yarn and pressing it nice and flat from edge to edge, from top to bottom. So I'll do this first one together with you so you can sort of see what it's going to look like. <laughs> now, here's my thought process on what to do once you've applied all of the yarn. And you can see I'm running that bead of glue right over top of the horizontal yarn. At this point, once you get all of your yarn in place, you could go ahead and go ahead do a zigzag stitch right over top of your yarn, securing everything in place. So that would secure your yarn in place and it would secure all of the edges from your five inch squares. You could do that before you apply your border. You could do that after you apply your border. 
and that's what I plan to do. I'm going to go ahead and put down all of my yarn, let it dry, and then I'm going to add my borders all the way around my quilt. I am going to layer my quilt with the batting and the backing and then I'm going to sew down all of my yarn at the same time as I'm quilting my quilt and that will serve as my quilting and securing my yarn and my five inch squares all at the same time. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be really simple with the quilting on this quilt and really I'm just going to be quilting all of the horizontal lines and the vertical lines of my quilt. And so if I wait until all of my quilt is put together to do that and do it at the same time when all of the layers are have been added, then I will essentially do two steps at one time. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so you could go ahead and stitch it down now or wait until you are all finished and you're quilting your quilt. Just like that, I'm smushing that yarn right down into the glue, right over top of where they intersect at these corners. And I will do this from the top all the way down to the bottom. See that you can see that. See how pretty that's going to be? And it serves the purpose of anywhere that the applique or your satin stitch didn't quite line up. It's not even going to matter. So isn't that just lovely? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and apply all of my vertical yarn. We'll come back as I am ready to add my borders and we'll do that part together. Here we are back from another break for today. <laughs> and you can see I have all of my yarn in both directions all glued down. It is not going anywhere. I feel very safe to go ahead and add my borders and get them on while this will not do any shifting or moving or come loose. It is tacked on there pretty well. However, you can certainly sew through this, so don't be afraid to bring this to your sewing machine whenever you're ready to do that, either now or wait like I am and do the quilting along the same time as doing your zigzag stitch to secure everything down. Once everything was dry, I just finished trimming all of the extra bits that hang over the edge of the quilt so you can see they're all nice and clean and flush with the edge of my quilt all the way around just like that and so now I'm ready to add my borders I just finished pressing and cutting out my borders so for the borders this is the uh, sheet at, at the very beginning in the introduction video if you need this sheet, you can go to that video in the description box and download this sheet. For the border fabric, you'll need 5 eighths of a yard and you'll need to cut from that 4 strips that are 5 and a half inches wide. So this is cut from fabric that is 43 inches wide and that gives me plenty of fabric to do my borders on each side. And these are cut again to five and a half inches wide. So the first thing I'm going to do is take two of my borders and add them to the left and right sides of my quilt with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I will press that open and square off any extra that hang over the top and bottom edges. And then I will come back and add the top and bottom borders again with a quarter inch seam allowance. And square everything up. Now I believe that that is pretty easy. Um, yeah, if you're making this quote, you probably know how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and add these borders and we're going to come back when I have this quilt top with the borders on and my three layers, my backing, my batting, and the quilt top.
And here we are with both the left and right borders on and the top and bottom borders on. You can see they've all been pressed and my quilt is squared off and everything is trimmed nice and pretty. So let me show you a picture of what my quilt looks like with the borders added onto it. Now, do you ever stand in the fabric shop and you see a fabric and you think, oh, this is going to go so perfectly with my quilt. And then you sew it on and you're like, oh, that is not what I thought it was going to look like. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not really happy with my, with my border fabric. In my mind, it looked totally different versus now that it's on my quilt. So I really do think some separation with some bias tape is really going to help my quilt a lot. <laughs> so this is the double fold bias quilting binding. And I got it in black and this is, let's see, 0.875 inches wide. So it looks like this. It has been double folded and so there is a small little overlap on the back that'll go towards the back towards the back onto the quilt just like this. So because this does open up, I'm going to leave it folded just like this and I'm going to start this right here because on the Let's see, the left and the right side borders, the, this border here, it is joined with the top and bottom borders here. So I'm going to run this from this seam all the way up to the next seam where we added the top border. And then I will add, let's see, see if I can do this. Nope, it's one continuous piece. So this will be like that. And then I'll take this from the edge of the quilt just like that and overlap that raw edge and everything will be nice and finished. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I think these borders really need some kind of division. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to take them off even though I'm not completely 100% happy with them. I do think that this will help a lot and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these down into place. I'm going to layer my quilt and then I'm going to bring you along as I sew the zigzag stitch through my yarn and we'll couch these yarn pieces onto our quilt and quilt our quilt at the same time. And I'll also be sewing this binding onto the front and that will act as my quilting as well. So let me get back to gluing and see how this looks after we've added this binding. Now here we are finally at the sewing machine. I have all of my bias tape glued down over my seams and I think that's really going to help my borders that I'm not 100% crazy about. I think it'll help blend everything in. So let's go over what has happened since we were just together. I went ahead and glued down all my bias tape. Then I layered my quilt. I have a purple sheet that I found at the Goodwill. I think it's perfect for the quilt backing. I have uh, soft and bright uh, batting in between. I'm going to show you the label on that. And then I just pin basted all of my quilt layers together. And so I'll show you a couple of pictures of what that looks like right here. And now we are ready to start quilting. So I have threaded my bobbin with some black thread and I'm using black in the top. I'll show you the thread that I'm going to quilt my quilt with right here. And this is also the needle that I'm going to use to quilt my quilt. I just changed out my needle so it's a brand new needle in my machine. And we're ready to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew down my black yarn couching with a zigzag stitch. So I've already set all of my settings. I went through and changed all of my settings until I found one that I think will work perfect for the thickness or the width of my yarn. 
and I'm ready to start quilting. So my quilting will also be uh, sewing down all of my yarn and closing those five inch squares permanently. I believe, let's go ahead and start in the middle of this quilt, and I know you can't see the whole picture, but I'm hoping you can get a good idea of what I'm doing. Let's see, let's move all of my quilt right into here. I'm going to start in the middle on the vertical line and I'll couch and quilt at the same time my yarn starting right in the middle. And we will work our way out as we go. Bring it right in there and I'm going to start right where this bias tape uh, the edge of this bias tape I'm going to just start my stitching there I will take a few back stitches just to lock these stitches right into place and uh, let's begin to feed the whole quilt through. We're getting ready to go over this first intersection where the yarn goes vertically and horizontally. So we're just going to go really slow. I'm hoping my fingers are not in the way. might have to go slow right over top of these intersections if you're using something thick like a yarn like I am. you get the idea so I'm going to go ahead and speed this part up so that you see everything however we're not here for <laughs> three hours while I'm stitching this line back down to the bottom at the bias tape so I'll take a few back stitches
and go to the next line. So I'm going to go ahead and do all my vertical lines and yeah, I'll do all my vertical lines and then I'll do my horizontal lines. Now I just finished sewing all of my vertical lines and I've rolled my quilt up so that it goes through the throat of my machine a little bit easier. And now we're ready to start with the horizontal lines. This, the lines that go uh, across our quilt from the right to the left. I have my needle up against the very edge of the bias tape just like before and I'll do a couple back stitches. I'm going to start in the middle of the quilt and work my way to the top and bottom. I'll go ahead and speed this part up so that uh, it goes by a little bit quicker. back down to the bias tape on the left side of the quilt. We'll do some back stitches and then lock that in place. And now I can continue sewing all of the other horizontal lines and we'll come back after that. I'm back now and all of my yarn has been couched down into place. So all of the quilting in the center of my quilt is done. I've switched over to a straight stitch and I'm going to run along the raw edge of the bias tape on both sides and quilt that down and sew that down permanently and I will do that along the top and bottom bias tape and then I'll come back and do the left and right uh, sides and I will show you how I'm going to do that.
Okay, there is my bias tape. It is sewn down and quilted all at the same time. I think that's very pretty. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and then the left and right pieces. I, <laughs> I'm undecided if I'm going to do any free motion work in this border. If so, I will go ahead and quilt that. If not, either way, I'm going to trim up and square off all my batting and then add the binding and then we're going to come back when my quilt is all finished. And here we are, my friends. We are all done with this quilt. Let me show you. I just finished the binding. So I think that turned out fantastic. I will say with the bias tape and the uh, binding on my border fabric, uh, I don't love it, but I like it a little bit better. Isn't that always the case, or at least with me? After I'm done, there's always something that I would have changed in my quilt, but... I still think it turned out fantastic. So for the binding, and this is the information sheet from the introduction video, the binding you'll need 3 eighths of a yard. Cut that into five strips that measure two and a half inches wide. That will give you your binding that goes all the way around the edge. And like all of our other videos, this quilt is not gonna fit in the frame. So I'm gonna start sharing some pictures of a full view of my quilt right here so that you can see everything. And I'm gonna just say, I absolutely love this quilt. This has got to be the most untraditional quilt that I have ever made in my entire life. Uh, not having to worry about my quarter inch accurate seam allowance. Not having to wonder if my points are meeting when I line up my rows. It has been a lot of fun, but certainly untraditional when it comes to quilting. But it's kind of nice to be able to just let loose and be creative. And even after fretting about my satin stitch not matching up from block to block, after adding the couching with the yarn, you cannot tell and it looks absolutely amazing. As always, I would love to see your pictures and there's going to be some links in the description box to the Creative Crew group. You can send them to me privately if you don't want to share with everyone on my Facebook page. Just message me there or if you don't do those two, you can join me on Etsy and send me a message. I would love to see your pictures. It has been so much fun the past eight weeks seeing all of your inspiring photos, all of the different colorways that you have major quilts and uh, just spending time with you in throughout the week has been just a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed this quilt series. I hope you have too. And uh, yes, I just, I'm, I'm super excited. I can't wait to hang this up on the wall and uh, display my little art quilt. And yeah, <laughs> I, I don't exactly know where I'm gonna put it yet. So, and we are clearing out our house in order to put it on the market. So this might have to wait until the new home or the new studio space. So that's kind of exciting. If you have any questions, I would love to help. You can uh, drop down to the comment section and ask your questions there. You can message me, Facebook and Etsy, as always, those two links and Yes, I hope you send me your pictures. And if you're watching this, and this quilt series has been posted for some time, maybe six months, maybe a year from now, maybe five years from now, and you've decided to make this quilt, I hope you still show me your pictures and share your work with me. I would love to see it. Thank you all so much. I've enjoyed our eight week series. I've enjoyed the time. And I cannot wait to start another project with you really soon. So enjoy this quilt. Thank you so much. Bye everyone.